So what is riding the clutch? Because as far as I can tell, there are many different opinions on what is riding the clutch and normal clutch use. So in this video, I'm going to explain and demonstrate normal clutch use, which allows your clutch to last a very long time, and riding the clutch, which reduces the life of your clutch significantly. To demonstrate what the clutch does, I have an electric screwdriver with a skateboard wheel on the end of it. This represents the engine and another skateboard wheel on the end of a bearing, which represents the clutch. When your clutch is up, the clutch is connected to the engine. So whatever the engine does, the clutch does. When the clutch is down, it's disconnected so the engine can spin without the clutch spinning. When you lift the clutch, the clutch connects to the engine and gradually matches its speed with the engine. The trouble with that is there is slippage between the clutch and the engine's flywheel whilst it matches the speed. You can see it doesn't speed up immediately, takes a little while, and then the speed is matched. That friction can wear the surface of the clutch. So what people try to do to get around it is they lift the clutch quickly and harshly so there's no slippage and the clutch matches the speed of the engine immediately. Trouble is with that is that when you do that, there's a big shock that goes through the car every time you do that. And it puts a lot of stress on other components of your car, such as your gearbox, which is really expensive. But the good news is the clutch is designed to deal with a certain amount of slippage. It's there to allow you to move away smoothly without damaging other parts of your car. But how much slippage is too much and what is considered riding the clutch? Here is an example of normal clutch use. So my clutch is down, I'm in gear and my handbrake is off, so I'm ready to go. I've got some gas ready and when no one's coming, I lift the clutch to the bike point and hold it as the car starts moving. There's slippage, there's slippage, there's slippage. And now there's no slippage, I can come fully off the clutch. And when I change gear, as I lift the clutch, I pause for just a moment there, a second or so, to allow a little bit of slippage to make the gear change smooth. On both those occasions, I allowed for some clutch slippage so that I could move away smoothly. You don't have to come fully off the clutch pedal for the clutch to match the speed of the engine. Just holding the clutch at the bike point will allow the clutch to match the engine speed. Once it is matched, come fully off the clutch though, or you will wear the release bearing. What riding the clutch is, is when you lift the clutch at the bike point and you don't let the clutch spin. This generates a lot of heat and wears your clutch really quickly. So here are some ways you can do that. One way is to hold the clutch on the bike point with your handbrake on. If I do that now, give some gas, the handbrake's on, lift the clutch to the bike point, the clutch can't spin because the brake is on. Therefore, the clutch is stationary and the engine's spinning. I wanna stop doing that now because that's making my clutch very, very hot as it isn't allowed to spin and match the speed of the engine. This is why if you're on a hill, as I am now, and you're using the handbrake start method to deal with the hill, don't lift the clutch until you can see no one's coming or as you'll hold the clutch on the bike point whilst your handbrake's up for a long period of time. So what I do is clutch down first gear, get some gas, and when no one's coming, then I'll lift the clutch to the bike point and take the handbrake off. Therefore, you're minimizing how long your clutch is on the bike point with your handbrake up. And it's why it's important to minimize handbrake starts to hills. You don't want to do a handbrake start every time you move away or you'll wear your clutch very quickly. If you use the clutch to stop you rolling back on a hill for anything more than a few seconds, you'll wear it out very quickly. So I'm going to get first gear, get some gas and some bike point, and then take the handbrake off. And now my car isn't moving simply because I'm holding the clutch on the bike point, but the clutch can't spin and the engine is spinning. So now the clutch is getting very hot. So what I'm going to do, so I'll lift the clutch a little bit more to allow it to start spinning. And now it can match the speed of the engine and start to cool down. Using second gear to move a manual car from a standstill will put more heat into your clutch. So if you stop, use first. The problem with using second gear when you're not moving at all, although it's okay when the car is moving slowly, it's not much of a problem. But if you're not moving at all, you have to hold the clutch at the bike point for a lot longer, a lot more slippage. I'm still holding it, more slippage, more slippage, more slippage. Because in second gear, you have to go faster before you can completely release the clutch than you do in first gear. If you're sitting in traffic, in gear, with your clutch down, you're not riding the clutch. 
you're not wearing the clutch friction material, but you are wearing the release bearing, so neutral and clutch up when possible. But the absolute worst thing you can do to your clutch is move away with too many revs. If you're moving away with between two and two and a half thousand RPM of revs consistently, it's not gonna be a disaster, but you will wear your clutch prematurely. However, there's only so many 4,000 RPM starts you can do before your clutch is toast. Oh, that's painful. Oh, I can smell that. The things I do for these videos. If you're lifting the clutch and pushing it back down again to stay slow in stop-start traffic, this is just normal clutch use. You're not riding the clutch and you're not causing excessive wear. For example, I'm about to reverse into a parking space and if I come off the clutch fully, I'll reverse back far too quickly and I'll risk hitting that lovely white car over there. I wouldn't want to do that, would I? Your clutch is mildly sacrificial and what I mean by that is it sacrifices itself to save other components of your car but it's only mildly sacrificial. It will last a very long time. How long it lasts, well, that's the same length as that piece of string. There's many factors that affect how long your clutch will last. If you live in a very hilly area and you do mostly town miles, it's not gonna last as long as if you do motorway miles. If you do motorway miles, it will last a very long time. And it also depends on what car you buy. If you have a very heavy car with an underpowered engine and that engine has a clutch designed to be used with that engine, that clutch is working really hard to move that heavy car and vice versa. If you have a light car with a really powerful engine, the clutch is gonna last a long time, unless you do 4,000 RPM starts. Trying to extend the life of your clutch by coming off it quickly will only harm other components of your car and you can damage your clutch doing it this way anyway. If you think the video helps, please give it a thumbs up. I now have Instagram and Facebook accounts if you wanna check those out, they're both Conquer Driving and check out Collingwood and Confused in the description. Collingwood are great, if you're learning to drive, you can insure yourself on somebody else's car without risking their premiums. It takes away a lot of the stress. At the moment, there's up to 35% off via the link and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. And using that link does support this channel. So thank you very much. If you're looking to insure your own car, check out confused.com. You fill out one quote form and get many quotes back. So it saves you time. Also, you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the link in the description does support this channel. If you want to get my future videos, please subscribe. And until the next one, cheerio. But how much slippage is too much? Because it is excessive slippage, which is considered riding the clutch.